Alan Smith, has Gareth Southgate changed something about the national game? Yeah, definitely. I think we've got to look at the big picture here. 18 months ago, we had a team that was unloved. Didn't really seem to enjoy putting an England shirt on. And he's actually just changed the whole culture. You know, he's developed a team here. It's not just playing for England. And whatever, whether people come from Manchester United, whether they've come from Spurs, whether they've come from wherever, they've actually just really got together as a group. And I think that's been brilliant. Plus, by the way, he stopped the gobbledygook type of talking. <laughs> Even talks the layman like, can understand now talks what like Gareth is getting. He talks <laughs> like a human. And, and, and outside, just football talk. You know, he, he's got that the nation wants a good football right. team, a good cricket team. You know, a good one to be proud team. of on, in their conduct as well as in their, their, their play to some extent. Well, yeah, uh, again, yeah. he played like that. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. he, he, he played by the rules. But having said that, he's got an edge to him, and uh, I think that came out a little bit as well. Yeah, Mike Bright, have you been surprised at the success he had? Most most of us have been a bit surprised at how far England have got. Did you see that coming? No, I don't think anybody saw it coming to, to get to the semi-finals. Um, we have a young team, we have a young manager. Um, I think he's done everything right this World Cup. Um, we just fell at the final hurdle once again. But I think he's given English football its pride back. I think um, everyone's got a team they can be proud of. Um, 2020 is um, going to come around the corner. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the, those games are going to be right across Europe. And I think everyone can look forward to that with this young English team we have. And to add a few more youngsters to it, we've got successful groups underneath that, the under-20s, the under-18s. So hopefully in the years to come, we, they can all filter through and get to the senior team and, and make us proud once again. And is the manager you've seen in public and the way he's behaved and conducted himself is he the same man he was when he was captain of Crystal Palace for example yeah, I think Alan will tell you the same thing. He hasn't changed one bit. Um, humility. You can just see that, you know, he goes around, shakes everybody's hand after the game. He's not a ranter or a raver. He's a very calm talker, a very calm person. And, you know, he's captained every age group he's played in, the 16s, the 18s, the under-21s, and then the first team. So he is a, a leader of men. And... Um, He'd be bitterly disappointed like everybody else is for him. And I think we all, listen, you're just so proud of him. Yeah. Alan, let's go through the things he's done. So, first of all, team selection, because he's famously not picked some of what you might have regarded as the sort of inevitable players. He's made some difficult decisions, right? Yeah, he has. And I think we, we went through a period under other managers where they were forever asking the players what hotels would she, we stay at, you know, what kit should we wear, what waistcoat should we wear. Whereas Gareth <laughs> actually said, look, I, I, I'm the leader of this group. I'm going to set the tone of how we go about things. And he's taken that away from the players. I don't think the players really want to be involved in where they stay. And he hasn't really let there be enormous egos and even right. you know, so you get more of a team that way. Oh, without a doubt. Right. And even things like it may be critical with some people, but you know, getting players to practice free kicks is really hard. They don't <laughs> like doing it. They want to score the spectacular goals. So he's done all the planning on on the mundane right. things that made us good. Now hold that thought because we've got some pictures which you're going to show uh, the audience, and, and you'll see them as well, of, of a boot camp with the Royal Marines, mm. sort of late last year in Devon, and this is where you can see. I'm taking the team to train with the, the Marines. I love it! I love it! Eight, ten, nine, eight, seven, everybody up! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Headlights, in case you know you get a little bit scared in the night. Right. It's not like the average BBC away day, I can assure you. Now, you, you used to do that at Crystal Palace to some extent. Yeah, every right? year. I mean, from the age of 16 to when he was through to 22, we go to Catterick Barracks with the, the guards' barracks. We spend 10 days up there, which I thought was a good idea until I actually had to do it myself. And then, but at the end of it, we'd, we'd have 10 days in Portugal. And I think it very much. <laughs> Blended and bonding, chilled with everybody. Bonding, or is it actually about the physical exercise? Well, both, really. Yeah. But I think you find that a lot of people, when they're, they're under pressure. So I think Gareth had always carried that through. I have to say, we didn't have health and safety in those days. <laughs> made it a bit we, easier. We, we managed to not lose anybody. <laughs> Mark Bright, I mean, one thing I, I worry about when we talk about the change in English football, of course, is we did have a lucky break with the, with the, uh, the, the path through to the semi final, didn't we? Is, it, is luck basically yeah, the great. greatest thing? Yeah, that, I, that's. Listen, that's, that's not our fault, is it? I mean, we got through the group stage and then obviously it, it fell quite lucky for us. 
how long will it be before we get another opportunity like this with the, with the pathway what created for us? I think that's why that's the disappointment from for me sitting here now. You're thinking, I might never see that again in my in my lifetime. And and th that's the luck. Everyone will tell you to win anything, a tro any trophy, you need a bit of luck. And maybe that pathway opening up for us was the bit of luck. But it's just about. I like what Alan said about the, the team bond. And you know, he's what he's done is created the club atmosphere with the national team. You know, part the egos at the door. You know, whichever club you play for, we're together now. We come in this door, and that's what he's done. He's done it very successfully, and that's what a lot of other England managers have failed to do. Well, they've struggled to do to create that atmosphere within the group as a club with the national yeah. team. Alan, last one. Does low expectations help the team? Definitely, but he played down the low expectation. He was the one that was saying to the press, you know, don't get excited. And I think he set the tone pretty much throughout the competition. But there's one thing I will say, he won't change. He'll go back to Harrogate next week. <laughs> he'll take the dogs out for a walk. And, you know, he'll go back to normal life and worrying about Brexit and all the other things this country <laughs> faces. And he alluded to that, didn't he, as well? He did indeed. Alan Smith, Mike Bright, thanks both very much indeed.